if you follow all these videos, you see, we always try to find things that might be on your mind that we can help explain and help you understand. This is one of those topics I'm not sure anyone can fully understand in just a few minutes, but we're gonna give it a shot. First off, what does it stand for? NFT, it's a non-fungible token. Imagine you have two $5 bills and you want to exchange those bills for one $10 bill. Luckily, you can do that because it's fungible, but NFTs are non-fungible. It is a digital certificate of authenticity. There's a lot of everything these days, so it makes sense that the original would be worth something, right? At least that's what a lot of people are expecting. Think of it as a bet on the future. If you purchase an NFT token, a record of that transaction and ownership is put on the blockchain, which is a permanent online ledger of transactions. When you exchange money for these NFTs, you do it with cryptocurrency, like Ethereum, Bitcoin, or Dogecoin. You can always cash out for real money. It all seems kind of bubblicious in a way, but there's real money being exchanged. It all depends on how much someone's willing to pay for it. For example, the Silly Cat Pop-Tart GIF was minted and sold for $580,000. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey sold his first tweet as an NFT for $2.9 million. A piece of digital art made by Beeple sold at a Christie's auction for $70 million. The market for NFTs began to pick up big time last year with more than 222,000 people participating in a quarter of a billion dollars worth of sales, quadrupling the volume of 2019. Artists may be the biggest winners here. Just like hundreds of thousands of artists that are, are um, coming together and collaborating and like getting each other excited. We spoke to Steve Isbin in Seattle. He spent time making this strange cat gift that went viral. So we decided to see what this NFT thing is all about and sold the gift for $3,000. Where this technology is going to go is what I'm really wrapping my brain around, which I just can't. Yet. I wanted to dig deeper on this, so I spoke with Jess Sloss. He is the instigator at Seed Club. It's a social token incubator. We hit on some really interesting topics about what is an NFT, yes, but what will it be in the future and what will this whole crypto craze become? There's a bunch of interesting points in the interview that you may want to zip ahead to, but here it is. I'll just let you listen in. Uh, first of all, amazing beard. Thank you for joining us and uh, I'm really curious about this cryptocurrency, the NFTs, first of all, what's the point, Jess? Oh, great question, and thanks, Jake. Uh, the point is to give more power and agency back to creators. You know, for, for so many years, um, individuals have been creating so much value on the internet, whether they're creators, YouTubers, or they're uh, bringing communities of people together. But all that value right now is still captured by, by the platforms, right? So it's going to Facebook, it's going to YouTube. Um, and it, tokens represent a new way to um, to monetize the work, to capture that value, and and ultimately to sort of build tighter, closer relationships with fans and, and other people on the internet. And so, what is the value to someone who pays hundred thousand dollars or whatever for artwork, um, and they own this piece of whatever? What what is the true value of having that? And I think that's really to be determined. Um, and so, you know, th that that ownership can be used in, in, in many ways. I think right now it's being used to flex or to signal to show that I either have a lot of money or I'm really cool. But I think there's a, a much longer term opportunity here where we now are able to represent ownership of digital goods. That's going to uh, tie into a whole bunch of different things. So we use them um, as a way of uh, representing membership or, or uh, access to communities. Uh, we're seeing them probably tie into this broader DeFi or decentralized finance world where NFTs will, will be used as collateral. So there's a world in the future where uh, you know, a $500,000 NFT might be used as a way, as, you know, to collateralize a loan for for a home or for a boat. I don't know what people buy who have $500,000 to spend on on NFTs, but um, so I think there's a, there's a lot more to come. But right now, what we're seeing is this idea of wanting to own this unique collectible that signals some sort of a relationship or or affinity with an artist or a creator. I've heard you talk before a lot about kind of exclusivity, maybe membership clubs or gate access for people who have tokens. It sounds like that might be a future where this could could be headed in your view. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that tokens allow us to do is to, to uh, as Chris Dixon from A16Z calls, capture more of the demand curve. So right now on the internet, you know, most of us are, are monetizing our websites or our communities using advertising and it, it's a pretty low value. It doesn't uh, signal any difference between say me or you and you being a bigger fan, maybe being willing to spend more to to participate or to access that community. And so tokens kind of uh, allow us to 
have more variety in, in the amount that we maybe charge. Um, so we can have different tiers of access. We can identify who our, our biggest fans are. Um, and, and ultimately, uh, since these are our tokens, we can use them as, as membership. So one of the core utilities we're using with lots of our projects is that if you hold a certain number of tokens or you hold a certain NFT, you get access to a, a private community. And this either is a Telegram group or a Discord channel or, or server. Um, and in many ways, it sort of like gives you a way of you know, owning or investing into a community. There's a project called Friends with Benefits, it's fwb.help, where you have to hold 60 FWB tokens to be able to access. And once you get in it, it's been called sort of like a digital Soho house. Um, and once you're in there, there's, you know, hundreds of channels and all sorts of cool people from LA and New York that are all, you know, making stuff and, and helping this is each already other. already happening, you're saying? Already happening, exists today. Wow. It's, you know, the, a, a core thing that we do at C Club is help launch these types of projects. And so we've just worked with 11 projects through our last cohort. Um, so I think it's like the, the very first utility we see here. So token gated access, hold a certain amount of tokens, hold a certain NFT, get access to this unique community, feel a sense of ownership. And as more and more people want to participate and access the community, uh, since these tokens do trade, the, the value of those tokens go up. So, uh, but, but ultimately I think it's this, wanting to create a, a you know a better more interesting place on the internet to come together and to have a shared ownership over that oh i love that um what at the very beginning of of nfts how did what was the goal what was the purpose to to even begin this was there an end game in mind well i think so many things within the crypto space are, are you know here's this new tools what can we do with them and um ultimately at, at the core of cryptocurrencies is, and, and blockchain is this idea of, of digital scarcity and so i think what people were looking for was a way of, of representing scarce digital objects that were non-fungible so things that are, are not the same you know if you put you know hundred dollar bills into into a hat it doesn't matter which dollar bill you pull out making dollar bills fungible and lots of cryptocurrencies are like that non-fungible tokens are more like um you know, if you put a bunch of Pokemon cards in the hat, and it very much matters which Pokemon card you pull out because one might be worth millions of dollars and the other worth worth nothing. What big has to happen for mainstream world to accept this as being an everyday currency? Are you seeing a big step that's coming? I think the mainstream is, is here and we're just really early in the adoption cycle. So yeah, I think it's really easy to see things as, as bubblicious, which is a great word, because um, there's just so much attention that comes in a short period of time. Um, but if we look at like Top Shots, which is an NBA uh, NFT, essentially, or you know, being able to purchase moments, these meaningful moments within NBA history, um, it's, it's a very easy user experience. There are hundreds of thousands of people that are in line to buy these, these NFTs when they launch. Um, so I think we're going to see more major uh, IP owners come into the space, and that's going to bring in a whole new wave of, of consumers. And then I think just, you know, continuing to build out the utility of, of NFTs is th the reality with NFTs. Is I think we're going to see them and they'll be everywhere. We just probably won't call them NFTs at a certain point. Uh, there'll, there'll be collectibles, there'll be art, there'll be access, there'll be, um, you know, ownership rights over things. Uh, I compare NFTs right now more to like the early iPhone app store. Um, you know, maybe the things that we see right now aren't going to have long-term lasting appeal, but the, the platform's not going anywhere. The genie's out of the bottle and, and there's a lot more interesting things to come that will drive broader adoption. Does, any three, does anything in your view threaten this whole crypto industry, maybe a split? I mean, what if it comes down to losing all your money? I mean, it's not necessarily at a central bank, so is it that safe? Yeah, I mean, it's a, there's a whole new level of responsibility that's required to interact in these systems. And I think, um, you know, there's the, the difference between Web 2, which is the world that we probably play on, and, and Facebook and Twitter, and, and Web 3, which is more like the, the transfer of value online. It requires more of us, um, and uh, you know, hacks, losing money. Um, I was just talking about to a friend who had you know many hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of NFTs in a wallet that he can only look at, but he can't even access. And it's sort of it is part of the game in the early stages, at least. You know, I think there's uh, a lot of uh, advancements that are happening within platforms to reduce a lot of that risk. But yes, there's there's without a doubt risks. This is still really early. It's still very experimental, and so part of me is like. Yes, I want more and more people to come check it out, but but also, you know, I think so much of what we focus on at C Club is making sure people feel supported and being able to to explore this new space because it is unforgiving in many ways. And you have to be rich to be in this, though. Amazing. Well, I mean, you, you get rewarded for being early and for for exploring, right? This is a space where there's that's full of incentives, and so uh, there's these 
you know, massive, massive value in being early um, and and or being you know interesting or creating something of value. And I think it's capitalism on on display. Really, um, the the big difference here is now we can actually have ownership in the networks rather than those networks being owned by either investors or Wall Street. So you don't uh, feel like you don't feel like this is just a passing fad. You think that this is the start of big things to come, more big things. You know, I think the, the crypto space generally is showing that it's has staying power, and this is uh, you know an evolution in how we you know coordinate value in our economy. Um, so Web three crypto tokens, this is here to stay. Uh, does it look exactly like it looks today? Probably not. I think we're still in, in the early days, but there's no doubt in my mind that this is a, a paradigm shift in in how we are organizing and creating value in the world. Um, and these tools really unlock a whole lot of innovation and, and ultimately empower individuals in a way that, that no other digital tool has. And I think that's really exciting and, and I encourage anybody who's even remotely intrigued to just start dipping their toes in because I think it's uh, it, from the outside, it looks a lot different than it does from the inside. Uh, or what would be your insider tip for someone that's just looking to make money off of all this? It's not a game of play, Jake. <laughs> You're saying it's a long game. Yeah, I th exactly. I think like, I I'm most interested in people who are who are building new tools, new uh, value for communities. And so I guess like the the, the non cheeky way of answering your question is just to to jump into a place that you have interest in. Like I I think that's the big shift, right? It's I, in, in an ideal world, in a world that I see, we don't longer have to contort ourselves to fit into jobs and roles in corporations. We're able to jump into communities that we're excited about and passionate about, and that these communities now have the resources and the ability to reward you for the effort you're putting in, both in paying you a salary like um, you know wage, but also in, in earning tokens that through your collective efforts could go up significantly in the future. So I think, what are you interested in? Go find a community that's also interested in that in a crypto way and you'll probably be uh, well received. All right, thank you, Jess Sloss with Seed Club, a social token incubator. Thanks for your perspective, we appreciate it. Thanks, Jake. So it's a gamble. It really is a gamble. Cryptocurrency is still considered a speculative market, but if you want to get in on the ground floor of something, the time is now for crypto.